Hey, I'm Michael Santos with ResilientCourses.com and we're again, we're trying to provide as much information as we possibly can to help family members who have loved ones in prison. Now, if you're following the news, you know that this COVID-19, we're learning more and more about it every day and the people in prison are vulnerable, maybe more so than people outside because we really can't self-isolate. Now, re yesterday, yesterday was August the 3rd, the CDC made a recommendation that all Americans wear these face masks. Well, people in prison don't have the ability to put these face masks on. And so it makes them actually more vulnerable. So people that can be going, serving time in prison for, for, for relatively, certainly nonviolent offenses, whether it's wire fraud, mail fraud, you know, tax evasion, um, they're serving time in federal prison that potentially is two or three years, but if they get infected with this COVID-19, the, the problem can be really exacerbate their, their, their sanction and perhaps even to an unconstitutional measure, which, which is why the Attorney General took an unprecedented step suggesting that people in prison, that so directing the, the, the Bureau of Prisons to transition as many people as possible from prison to home confinement. Now, and, and the reason that's so important now is because the CDC is, is releasing information or experts are release, releasing information suggesting that the virus can actually just hang in the air. So even though you, in society we can practice social distancing, I haven't left my house since California really implemented the these stay at home and work from home policies but people in prison don't have that ability nor do they have the ability to put a mask on their face and 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 be safe from from this pandemic that is afflicting so many people around the globe people in prison are going to be exposed because staff members live in society they have to get gasoline they have to go to the grocery store they have to do whatever they have to do to live out here and then they have to go to work and when they go to work they can't escape being in close proximity to people in prison the people in prison cannot put a mask on they cannot isolate they cannot wash their hands as frequently as we can out here because they just don't have access to the facilities that we have so it's really important that you you learn and understand what can you do today to begin pushing your loved one to the highest level for consideration to be transitioning to home confinement uh, if you if you if you don't have uh, a lawyer to represent you you need to learn how to advocate on your behalf if you don't have the funds to hire a lawyer then you need an advocate who really understands the Bureau of Prisons, the different regional offices, the administrative remedy procedures, the collateral consequences. You need to learn as much as you possibly can to get your loved one the relief that he needs because while he's locked in there, he may not have the ability to advocate for himself. He may not even know about the Attorney General's messaging. So it's really important to re remember that old cliche that it's the squeaky wheel that gets the, the grease in a bureau of prison, in a bureaucracy where there are more than 170,000 people confined and uh, staff members are having to probably going out of their mind right now trying to process all of this, it's going to be very important for an individual to have a good advocate on his behalf. And I hope that can be you. I was so fortunate to have Carol advocating for me while I was serving 26 years in prison. She came into my life during my last decade and really helped me in a number of ways. And like this, I know that she just would have been an angel, not only for me, but for other people. It just takes time, it takes energy, it takes a willingness to do whatever is necessary to advance uh, the, the, the best possible outcome for your loved one. And I hope you get started today.